Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and horror. Today we will discover the past and secrets of Jacqueline Ronier, the Grand Dame and Dark Lord of Richemulo, a prosperous sovereign of a nation and a leader of a horde of rare rats. Before we start, I would like to remind everyone that this video will focus on Richemulo from the classic Ravenloft campaign setting and will consider the events and characters that existed in the domain prior to the reboot of the Van Richten Guide to Ravenloft. At the end of my video coverage of Richemulo from the classic Ravenloft setting, I will make some considerations and comparisons with the new version of Richemulo in the Van Richten Guide to Ravenloft. Are you ready? Our search for the renowned arcane Aurek Nuikin led us to an abandoned tower in the dark woods known as the House of the Sages. Our travels through this realm have taken us too long, and a new cycle of the full moon is approaching, and with it our transformation into werewolves. Our unexpected arrival makes the mage wary, but our plea for help to heal us from the affliction of lycanthropy seems to move our Nuikin. It takes us to underground cells in the tower, where we are held during the night of the full moon. In the morning, when we wake up in our cells, Aurek come to meet us and reveal to us why he has become an expert in lycanthropy and returned secretly to Richemulo after his banishment by the ruler Jacqueline Ronier. In one of the cells, next to ours, we see the sad figure of Dimitri Nuikin, his brother. Their past adventures on Richemulo had ended up infecting Dimitri with lycanthropy now Aurek Nuikin is actively seeking a cure for his condition. His return to Richemulo was for one sole purpose, to hunt down and destroy the rare rat that had infected his brother, for without exterminating the source of this damned bloodline of rare rats, there will be no hope for Dimitri. Aurek Nuikin promises to help us with our mission and search for a cure for our own cursed condition, if you assist him in his hunt. He believes that the lycanthrope who infected his brother was part of the highest nobility of this realm, one of the twin sisters, Louise or Jacqueline Ronier. Over the next few days, we lock ourselves in the cells at night, and during the day we share information about the history and secrets surrounding the Ronier Werewat clan and their deadly leader, Jacqueline Ronier. How You have always been at my mercy. This is my domain and nothing happens I do not know about. Something you, Aurek Nuikin, should have remembered since I warned you in the beginning. I expected better from you, and I gave you every chance to confide in me. Perhaps you should have told me what you were looking for when you asked my permission to search. Did you think I have no feelings? Did you think I would take advantage of your love helplessness? Did you think I have never loved? I too have loved and lost. Go home, scholar. There is nothing left for you to learn in Rishmulo. Jacqueline Ronier is the Dark Lord of Rishmulo, a cunning and beautiful woman and were who rules men and monsters through games of intrigue and cruelty. Jacqueline's Ronier's character adapts themes from the Gothic tradition to the Ravenloft setting in conjunction with the theme of lycanthropy. Unlike the more famous werebeasts such as the werewolves, the were-rats represent their animalistic side as skittish, stealthy and cunning monsters and symbolize corruption and decay. Jacqueline Ronier embodies the figure of a blackmailer, manipulator and seductress from a decadent, evil and corrupt aristocratic family, hiding her true monstrous nature behind the mask of a dumb of high society. 
Jacqueline Ronia is a natural born rare rat, inheriting her monstrous condition from the Ronia family since her birth. She is currently 70 years old, but she doesn't look her true age. When she so desires, she can appear to be a maiden in her early 20s, and at times she presents herself to be an exuberant lady in her late 40s. In her human form, the beautiful Jacqueline has long, deep black hair, marked by small grey streaks on her side, and piercing green eyes flecked with gold, which sometimes seems to glow as if reflecting the light. Her body is slender, and she usually values her shape by wearing lush dresses, which can be extravagant or provocative, depending on the occasion and her intentions. In her rat form and hybrid form, her gnawing and monstrous aspect does not stand out, and she can easily manage to blend in with other rats that surround her. Jacqueline behaves with elegance, politeness and subtlety. Only fools mistake her posture for weakness, for Jacqueline is a skilled manipulator and is generally several steps ahead of anyone she is dealing with. In the third edition stats, Jacqueline Rolier, in addition to being a natural were rat, also had six levels as an aristocrat and five levels as a rogue. Despite being a terrifying and dangerous monster in combat, Jacqueline rarely opts for the path of direct confrontation. She cherishes control above all and takes pleasure in manipulating her enemies into impossible situations, where, with the support of her group of were rats and rodents, she can easily destroy her rivals. If forced into combat, she attacks cruelly and literally. Her bite can break through the hardest of objects, and she doesn't hesitate to fight dirty, taking advantage of hostage as human shields and spreading like entropy with her highly infectious claws and teeth. Jacqueline can climb and scale any type of surface and can command all rodents in Rishmulo. She can also transform into Gazio's Mist, a fetid green cloud, making the task of destroying her in combat almost impossible. The Grand Dom of Rishmulo is eloquent, charismatic and seductive, and her gestures can easily convey an aura of confidence, authority or menace. However, Jacqueline has some weaknesses that she hides under deep layers of secrets. Although she is a natural lycanthrope, she is cursed by the dark powers to always assume her rat form whenever she is in the presence of someone she truly loves. This curse has cost Jacqueline Ronier dearly, and she is traumatized by the rejection and loss of the one she considers her true love. The loneliness and anguish of her curse, and the packed mentality that plagues rare rats, have caused Jacqueline Ronier to develop monophobia and she is terrified and anxious about being alone, and fears she will be totally abandoned. Like all were rats and lycanthropes, she is extremely susceptible to an allergen, whose contact can prove fatal, and her weakness are dull feathers. However, not even Jacqueline herself knows which substance she is susceptible to, having never accidentally experienced such contact. Jacqueline Rodier is the supreme leader of Rishmulo, having inherited the position of power after the murder of her grandfather Claude Rodier, and maintains her position thanks to her cunning, manipulation, blackmail and threats, unveiling the secrets and plans of her rivals. She rules her domain from the Chateau de la Nuit, a mansion built on an artificial island in Ponamuza. When the Dark Lady of Rishmulo decides to close the borders of her domain, she summons a horde of rats to attack and devour those who wish to escape her lands. Anyone who falls among the seas of rats will quickly be devoured by the creatures, and even individuals capable of flying will find that their flight ability fails when crossing over the multitude of rats. But what horrors lurk in the past of the Grand Dame of Rishmulo? What dark secrets are kept under lock and key by the beautiful and menacing Jacqueline Ronier? 
Jacqueline Ronier was born in the year 686 of the Barovian calendar, in some unknown world of the material plane. She was the granddaughter of Claude Ronier, the patriarch and leader of a clan of were-rats, and the daughter of the human Simon Aldera and the were-rat Marie Ronier. Since her mother's womb, she was never truly alone, as she had a twin sister, Louise Ronier. The Ronier family had once been an important aristocratic family in their home world. However, they became cursed with lycanthropy, and many of its members became were-rats, and the family fell out of grace. The branch of the family that had become were-rats was pursued and hunted, until Claude Ronier took over the family's leadership, and with an iron fist, harbored dreams of power and revenge. Cut off from the nobility and prestige of their ancestors, they learned to live between two worlds, hiding their monstrous nature with wit, cunning and manipulation. During the period of this dangerous double life, Jacqueline and Louise expanded their childhood, and were considered the favorite grandchildren of Claude Ronier, who always encouraged them both to compete for his affection and favor. This period of relative tranquility would not last, however, as once again the Ronier's dark secrets were discovered, and they had to flee from the hunters. It was the young Louise Ronier who found a magical portal that would allow the clan to flee that world, and fate took them to the land of the mists, to the city of Silbervas in Falkovnia. The ambitious and ruthless Claude Ronier saw in these unknown lands a chance to fulfill his dreams of power, and quickly took control of a thieves' guild, while spreading the lycanthropy infection throughout the city. Claude Ronier was known as the Claude, and his presence posed a threat to the absolute ruler of those lands, the infamous Lord Vlad Drakov. His attempt to rise to power did not go unnoticed by the military who commanded the realm, and when one of the elite soldiers was beaten and infected with lycanthropy, Vlad Rakov led a campaign to purge the were-rats from Falkovnia. For three years, fist battles raged in the underground and sewers of Silbervas, and this period was recorded in Falkovnian history as the years of the impaled rats. All of Claude's cunning, cruelty and brilliance was not enough to stop the enemy soldiers' advances, and faced with imminent defeat and extermination, it was left to Claude Ronier to lead his family escape once again, this time to the misty frontier. Historical records seem to approximate the dates of this desperate escape and the unveiling by the mists of the lands of Frischmolo. Perhaps these lands are also part of the lost world from which the Ronier emerged, or were created to house their true masters, the rats and were-rats who served the cursed Ronier. Claude Ronier and his were-rat clan emerged in the empty, uninhabited realm of Richmolo in 694, and took advantage of the structure of their abandoned cities to establish themselves as leaders of that region. The Ronniers became aristocrats of that realm, which soon attracted immigrants and explorers from different lands. Although there is no established monarchy, Claude Ronnier consolidated his power and government in the region, with a mixture of intrigue, manipulation and fear, ruling both the human and were-rat population. While Richmulo grew to become a prosperous land, the core of the Ronnier family were teeming with intrigue, murder and betrayal. The Ronier family grew in number and power and became important members of Richmolo's society and aristocracy. Claude knew that his own kin could pose a threat to his power, and he was both a mentor and tormentor to them. The twin sisters, Jacqueline and Louise, were his favorite granddaughters, in whom he saw the greatest potential. Claude devoted himself to teaching his granddaughters his treacherous tactics, but he always kept them in an eternal contest for his favor and attention. 
Nothing they did was ever adequate for his parameters, and he delighted in pitting his relatives against each other in endless conflicts. All this dispute between the twin sisters ended up generating a violent conflict. Jacqueline always seemed to do better than her sister, and Louise believed that Jacqueline was unfairly favored by her grandfather. Envy gave way to bitter hatred, and Louise Ronnier brutally attacked Jacqueline. They transformed into their monstrous hybrid forms as they fought, but Jacqueline proved once more to be superior to her sister, and Louise barely escaped with her life. The battle dilacerated one of Louise's ears, and not even after receiving healing spells, her ear could be completely regenerated. Since then, Louise bears a distinction to her sister's features, having a deformed scar in her ear, a mark of defeat that she carefully, that she carefully hides with her long hair. Family disputes were not restricted to the twin sisters, in the year 710, Jacqueline's mother, Marie Aldea, murdered her husband, the human Simon Aldea, and once more adopted her single surname, Ronier, which also passed on to her children, Antoniette, Jacqueline, Louise, and Raoul Ronier. Jacqueline would also marry the human, Dominique Sofell, in a loveless marriage, arranged poorly on political issues. From this union, four of her children would come, all were rats, until Jacqueline herself followed her mother's example and murdered her husband. The Ronier's hold on Richemolo did not remain unchallenged, and it fell to Claude Ronier to lead the defense of their lands against the Falkovian invasions in the Borderlands War in 716 and the Executioner Campaign in 724. During this period, Jacqueline made one of the greatest demonstrations of her competence to her grandfather, dealing with a dangerous threat that had emerged from the mists in the city of St. Ronges, possibly engulfed by the mists from the Gothic earth, the Piper of Hamelin, came to the city and sold his services as a rat charmer to the town, with the intention of exterminating those vermins. Seeking to gain recognition for her grandfather, Jacqueline waited until midnight, when the piper began his song to enchant the rodents. Emerging from the mists, she distracted the piper from his song, and enchanted him with her beauty, seducing the musician until the rodents surrounded and devoured him. Jacqueline's victory was not enough to win the favor of her grandfather, Claude Ronier and she was soon fed up with being manipulated by the Patriarch. On one of the few and rare times that she and Louise shared a sisterhood bond, Jacqueline vented to her sister about her sorrows and anger at Claude, and was shocked to find that Louise shared those feelings, and that they both always thought that Claude favored the other. Together, they conspired against their grandfather, and discovered his main secret, the allergenic substance that for Cloud would be a fatal poison was Canfor, and they devised a way to poison and murder the Patriarch. When their plan was about to happen, however, Louise Ronier had a panic attack and chickened out at the last minute. None of this stopped Jacqueline Ronier from proceeding with the plan. A servant brought Claude a poisoned drink in his office. When Claude began to suffer from a severe allergic reaction after the poisoning, Jacqueline entered his office and thanked her grandfather for the valuable lessons taught. She plunged a silver fork into his heart and pushed his body to the highest window of the Chateau de la Nuit. The body took a free fall and went through the roof of the estate's kennel, where he crashed in the floor and was partially devoured by the family hounds. At the time of his death, many accused the Grand Doctors of Claude Renier to plan his murder, but few dare to share these speculations today. Claude Renier's sudden and mysterious death left a power vacant 
that was quickly filled by his granddaughter Jacqueline Ronier. His sister, Louise Ronier, regretted her cowardice and found that she would forever be cast aside by her sister, who was unwilling to share the power. Those who hoped to usurp the Ronier position of power after Claude's death found in Jacqueline an opponent equally cruel and cunning to more subtle and charismatic than her grandfather. She has ensured the Ronier's permanence as Richemulot's ruling family and has shown herself to be an apt leader. While Claude has secured his position through games of threat and fear, Jacqueline presents herself as a more thoughtful leader and has gradually gained the respect and admiration of the population, who call her La Grande Dame. Only fools are deceived by her apparent diplomacy and civility. The beautiful Jacqueline is perhaps her grandfather's best apprentice and does not shy away from threatening or retaliating against those who stand in her way. She always seems to be one step ahead of her rivals and often eliminates potential problems before they had a chance to threaten her dominance. In the year 729, Jacqueline led an important diplomatic agreement for Richemulo, having been a signatory of the Treaty of the Four Towers, an alliance of mutual protection, signed by the leaders of the Molieu, Morland, Richemulo, Borca and Orvinia. Since the signing of such an agreement, Falkovnia has not started another military campaign against the signatory nations. In her personal life, however, Jacqueline found only sadness and loneliness. Jacqueline's mother, Marie Ronier, met a tragic end when she was poisoned by Raoul Ronier, Jacqueline's younger brother. After the poisoning, Raoul was accused by Louise of matricide and fled to Barovia. Many members of the Ronier family attribute the murder of Marie to Jacqueline Ronier who did nothing to dispel the rumors, taking advantage of the fear it would cause in her relatives. Her marriage to the human Dominic Swarfell was devoid of any love or care. The union resulted in four children, all who became natural were rats. Following in her mother's footsteps, Jacqueline grew wary of her husband and murdered him in the year 732. Jacqueline was greatly afraid of loneliness, but her anguish became even greater after meeting the handsome aristocrat Henri Dubois. At first, the nobleman was only a passing interest to the Grand Dame of Richemulo, and the two became lovers. However, the ruling manipulator eventually became a victim of her own game of seduction and fell madly in love with Henry. Their relationship was doomed to tragedy, however. As soon as Jacqueline discovered that she truly loved Henry, she lost control of her form and turned it into a rat monstrosity, neither fully rat nor fully woman. Henry discovered with horror that he was relating to a rare rat and rejected Jacqueline, demonstrating his revulsion and disgust of her true form. The Dark Lord of Richemulo did not accept his rejection. Although she loved Henry, she would not be despised and decided to infect him with lycanthropy. Using her unnatural strength, she trapped Henry with her claws and used her fangs to bite her lover all over his body, leaving him on the brink of death. For days, she kept him in her quarters waiting for the infection to run its course. However, the Dubois family has a legendary resistance to lycanthropy, and her efforts were in vain. Enraged, she destroyed the furniture in her bedroom, but was unable to murder Henry, for whom she still had strong feelings. She went out into the night in her monstrous form, venting her fury through violence and murder. When she finally regained her calm and composure, she returned to Chateau de la Nuit, but Henry had fled and disappeared, and she never found her lover whereabouts. 
Jacqueline loved and lost, and to this day she searches for the whereabouts of Henri de Bois. This yearning for her lover has already been exploited by her sister Louise, who spread rumors of his whereabouts whenever she needs to remove her sister from the city for a while. Since she refused to murder her grandfather, Louise has always lived in the shadow of Jacqueline Ronnier. Although the sisters live together at the Chateau de la Nuit, their closeness should never be confused with real affection. Jacqueline is not only the ruler of Richemuro, but also the Queen of the Plague, ruling the greatest were-rat warren in the Land of the Mists. The Dark Lord of Richemuro is the ruler of the surface and the underground, and her success and power are a festering wound in Louise's heart. Louise has tried several times to outdo her sister, but Jacqueline is always one step ahead. In one of these attempts, Louise manipulated and blackmailed the brothers Aurek and Dimitri Nuikin to force the wizard Aurek to murder Jacqueline, but the plan failed. Many would expect Jacqueline to murder Louise in retaliation after these failed attempts, but the truth is that Jacqueline has a deep connection with Louise, and her monophobia makes she fear loneliness. As a result, she maintains an unhealthy relationship with Louise, and makes sure she never leaves her. Jacqueline has often commended the murder of Louise's possible lovers and companions, ensuring that her sister never find happiness in love or raise a family, and is forced to live with Jacqueline. Louise Ronnier, tired of living in her sister's shadow, has made plans to move to Demolio and establish her own warren of were-rats, but her planning is repeatedly sabotaged by Jacqueline. Jacqueline's children do not serve as companies for their mother either. She knows her offspring may one day try to destroy her, just as she did with her grandfather Claude Ronnier and she maintains strict control over her children. This manipulative relationship has caused three of her four children to leave Pont Amuzor, seeking a life far from their controlling mother. Only her eldest son, Jacques Ronier, lives with his mother and aunt, but the now adult Rarat is already beginning to have his own plans for how he will one day assume his mother's position of power. Jacqueline also finds threats to her position outside her core family. In 743 of the Barovian Canada, a nobleman named Girard Cavaillon tried to negotiate a secret agreement with Falkovnia to depose Jacqueline Ronnier. No one knows for sure the behind-the-scenes details of this betrayal, but Jacqueline Ronnier anticipated her rival and negotiated a secret agreement with Vlad Rakov who received it as a gift and a gesture of good faith. Girard Cavaillon's beautiful mistress as a prisoner and slave. For the past five years, Jacqueline Ronnier has been dedicated to a plot that could change Richemulot forever. While she continued to act as the kingdom's leader and aristocrat, she has used her position as Queen of the Plague to command the priests of her were-rat Warren to develop a dangerous plague. The becoming plague is in development by the few breeders in the waste pits, and through their unholy magic, they are developing a disease that will allow common rats to transmit lycanthropy with their bites. So far, efforts have proven little to rats, or creating monstrous were-rat aberrations. Jacqueline's Ronnier grand plan is to use these common rats to infect the entire population of Richemulo in a short space of time, becoming the absolute queen of a domain of rare rats, worshipped as a goddess by her peers. If this plan works, nothing prevents her from expanding her becoming plague to other domains of the mists, growing in power and influence. During the next full moon cycle, we spend the night in the cells, and the days talking with the brothers Aurek and Dimitri Nuikin. 
Auric revealed to us everything he has learned about Jacqueline Ronier and her clan of rare rats and asked for our help in destroying these monstrosities. Only with the death of the original light control, which began the lycanthropy infection, would there be any chance of a cure for his brother. And in our case, the situation will be the same. The wizard shows us his notes and records on lycanthropy and say he has learned a lot from Dr. Rudolf von Richten's studies and with the support of a cabal of hollow witches in Mordent. As we plan our next steps, we are plagued with foreboding talks as a lump forms on our throats. One of the sisters, Jacqueline or Louise, had set us on the path to finding Aurek, and we wonder if we were inadvertently manipulated to discover the location of one of her enemies. We seek the helpful wizard Aurek, unsure on how to approach the situation, when we hear the sound of a great horde of small animals. The tower begins to be invaded by a sea of hungry rodents and Aurek magic traps can't stop so many creatures. Aurek's last look to us is one of frustration, hatred and disappointment as the rats begin to cover his body and devour his flesh. We are waiting in horror for a certain death, but the rats don't attack us and we make out of the tower alive taking Aurek's research into lycanthropy with us. Outside the tower, we hear the last scream of Aurek Nuikin and notice the figure of a beautiful lady watching the destruction with a sadistic eye. Jacqueline Ronier approaches us and says that Aurek was a fool to disregard her orders to leave Rishmulo and wasted her merciful gesture. She hopes, however, that we are not as foolish as the wizard and tell us to get out of Rishmulo soon as there is no room in her lands for wolf beasts like us. In horror and despair, we prepare to journey to Mordent in search of Dr. Rudolf von Richten and the priestess of Hala. On our journey, we will have time to study Aurek Nuikin's notes and research and understand more about our curse of lycanthropy. Join us, subscribe to this channel, and activate notifications, and together, let's begin an in-depth study of lycanthropy and wild beasts as we continue our journey into the lands of Mordent. But before we go on on our studies, let's take a closer look at Jacqueline Ronier and Rishmulo as presented in the Van Richten Guide to Ravenloft for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition.